In this class, we are going to learn about one more component available in Visual Builder application that is Combo Box 1. In our coming classes, we will also have a look at Combo Box Many. In this class, we will focus on the basics of Combo Box 1. So, before going into hands on and see how to implement or make use of this component while building web pages in Visual Builder, we will have a quick look at the OJ documentation. I am here in the official documentation page by Oracle on Combo Box 1. As it says, a Combo Box 1 is a drop down list that supports single selection, text input, and search filtering. Here, there are a few examples provided by Oracle on how we can make use of Combo Box in order to achieve the use case. If it satisfies your customers or your requirement, then you can make use of this. Also, you can have a look at the select single component as well, which we had discussed in our earlier classes. Both will achieve the same, but combo box will have few more features which we cannot have in select single component. Here if you see we are having a label hint over here, also we can have a default value, even we can have a null value. In select single, as soon as you remove it will come back to the previously selected value because we cannot have an empty selection. So this is one of the common issues faced in select single component. Also we will have this label hint like this, if there is no value selected then label hint will come over here. We will see how we can do that as well. I will show you with this document. As it says we can have this combo box within the OJ form layout. It is a very common practice to use the select single or combo box within the form layouts. Also we can have this outside the form layout as well. So it will look something like this. Like any other component in Visual Builder, here also we can have a placeholders. Like if the user has not selected any value, then this will be a default or the placeholder value which it will take. That is the Chrome. If user select Firefox, then it will be taking as Firefox, whatever the user had selected. Also, we can make it as required or not. Here we can have a label hint source. If a user clicks on this and clicks on learn more, it will take you to the web page. Also, we can have some description about the definition. Here they have provided the dumb meeting. Also, we can display the label messages like the warning, error, so and so forth things. Now, if you come down, there is this .html page here. Suppose if you want any one particular use case, what is shown by Oracle, you can straight away come to this HTML page, copy and paste in your Visual Builder in the code view. Else, you can create from scratch as well, which we are going to learn in this class. If you just scroll down, if you want to make this read only, we can set the property as read only if the, if you want to disable anything we can set the property as disabled within the combo box if you want to provide the label hint we can provide like this also where we want to place the label if it is inside outside these things like we do in the select single component here also we can do same thing if you want to have some placeholder value then we can use this placeholder property suppose if the user doesn't select anything then the default value should flow to the back end so these things we can achieve with the help of combo box as I shown earlier, there is a label hint. If you want to provide some hint to the label or the component or in the web form, which makes use of this combo box, then we can provide like this. Also, we had seen it will take a user to some web page, then that we can achieve with the help of this help hint dot source. Also, the messages like the error warning details. So, anytime if you are stuck with the use cases, you can come to this OJ documentation and copy the piece of code from here and paste it in the Visual Builder application. Now, without wasting much time, let's see how we can achieve the same in Visual Builder. I have created one application that is a simple application like we create in our other classes. So what I will do is we have to search for combo box component over here and drag and drop it over here in the web page. So as soon as you drop, you will be prompted to go to this quick start automatically as soon as you drop this component. I am going to make use of this create static list of options and add the values in this LOV. Now I will add some values like first and what should be the value. I will name this as first value. If I want to add any icon, I can click on this edit and select the icon. If I want to add one more row over here in the LOE, I can add. Suppose I am giving some dummy value and the value will be second value. Suppose if the user does not select anything, then what we can do is we can provide a value over here, which will be the default value, which will flow to the form or the back end when the user does not select. Once everything looks good, click on finish. So let me switch over to this live tab and click on this list of value. Here we will see couple of options which we have added. Suppose if we go to the data tab over here, here we can add the rows. Like we can click on this plus row and add the new value. Suppose if you want to modify at later point of time, then that also we can do like this. Suppose if you want to change the placeholder value, we can go to the all sections over here. 
just scroll down you will find the placeholder that is over here suppose if you don't want dummy at later point of time and you want one we can modify like this suppose if i click on this and select some value it will be selected now it is not selecting because we have not mapped the value field over here like we do in select single component here also we can achieve the same we are having same options like the value value options and the options so options we will see in our next class how to populate this suppose we are making use of some array adp variable sdp variable then we can make use of these options suppose if the user select something it is not saving because we have not selected the value to which it has to be stored now i will go to the variables and quickly create one combo box variable to store the value v combo box variable click on create now go to the page designer here whatever user selects upon selecting the particular value from the list it has to save to the variable which you have created so i will drop this variable over here just drag and drop it over here click on save done now suppose if the user selects this first it will be saved to this variable suppose if the user selects the next value that is second it will be stored second over here in this variable suppose if you want to have the all the values associated particular to that row if it is an array or the object then it will be stored over here like what if you see over here in the value options the current value of the element and its associated display label will be stored if we have a maximum result count requirement wherein you have to show a particular value in the drop down then we can set it over here we are having only three values it's not a big deal but if you are having more than some 10 20 records then how much you have to store that we can set it over here the default will be 15 so like this we can populate the combo box one component in visual builder application with the help of static values in our next class we will make use of these options and populate the lov with the help of services that is we will call one of the rest apis and populate this LOV.